everyone, and welcome back to Dragalia Foundry, a fan channel where everything Dragalia Lost can be found. This video is going to contain my review of the latest summon showcase. It's another Gala Dragalia, this time around featuring Gala Emil. We've gotten a sense that he is going to be our next Gala adventure all month, especially once we had our most recent story update. And indeed, Gala Emil finally makes an appearance. This is the first time Emil is available as a playable character. He's a water element wand and has some really unique attributes in his kit, so I'm super excited to talk about that today and try to answer the question of whether or not you should summon. So I'm going to go ahead and click here into the Gala Dragalia page. As a reminder, as with all Gala Dragalias and remixes, you get the 6% appearance rate for 5 stars instead of the standard 4% on other kinds of showcases. And this time around, Gala Emil is the only featured adventurer, or dragon for that matter. There's not anything else given an appearance rate up or heightened appearance rate on this showcase, so really this is going to be for the Gala Emil diehard fans. Now there may be certain characters eligible to spark for in the Worm Sigils besides Emil, but outside of that, this is mostly a showcase about whether or not you want to get Emil. He's available from the 31st until the 4th, or let me clarify there, the showcase is available that long. Emil will be around in the future, but just on Gala banners, not on permanent uh, or other kinds of banners. So just on the Gala banners will he return. And he apparently also doesn't have a Battle Royale skin just yet. That's going to be added in the future. So let's take a look at Emil. And honestly, when it comes to this one, I think the answer of whether or not you should summon, it comes a lot down to the resources that you have currently because we are headed into February, there are going to be seasonal Valentine's characters and probably some permanent dragons, at least one, Atlas, likely added to the summoning pool then too. So there's reasons you might want to save if you prefer to collect those seasonal alts, then that's something that's likely going to happen here in the next month. But having said that, I do think Gala Emil has some really interesting properties. He's super unique. I think that his kit is just chef's kiss, like perfect representation of Emil. So I wouldn't fault you for summoning here either. Our next hard endgame content is going to be Primal Brunhilde's Trial, which is a flame element boss, meaning water characters are going to be who you want to take to battle. And for that reason, Gala Emil might be super prized in that fight. So it's been tough with our New Year summoning, with Kimono Nat, who I know is a fan favorite for many, you may not be in the best position to summon on this showcase, so I think you have to look at your resources very carefully. I'm not going to be summoning on this one, from what I can tell, because I don't have enough resources to guarantee I'm going to get a meal. I think you'd at least want to have about 36,000 Wormite, enough to do 300 summons so you could spark him in the worst case. And even then, I think maybe it's best to wait around the mid-year anniversaries, the half anniversaries, we do tend to get some return banners with past Gala characters. Sometimes they're locked behind platinum banners, but I think that what I'm going to do, my strategy is probably going to be wait out the next couple Gala adventure banners, maybe go for the Gala dragons, and then at some point try to catch up when there are multiple available on a showcase. We'll see whether or not that works out, because sometimes these characters can be very powerful, very meta right away, like Gala Leonidas, who I ended up not having for half a year or so. But uh, Emil, to me, there's the potential there that he could be, but uh, but I'm not sure. There, there are some limitations, so we'll get into that in this video as well. And let's talk about his kit, his design, his portrait, of course. Just awesome, super fitting of his personality. Praise be to your Emperor Me, Gala Emil, Water Element, Wand, Support Unit, the sixth scion of Elberia who became Emperor of the Dyrnell Empire after the other's defeat. Long tormented by comparisons to his siblings, he now looks inward to his own talents as he strives to rebuild the Empire with his vassals. Just love the, uh, love the presentation here of him. His skills are Follow Me Minions and Protect Me Peons, which is just perfect. Um, there are some other elements of his kit which I think are super funny. He has Waterworm's Guidance, so he has a Dragon Drive ability, which is uncommon, but it works in a very different way. 
Immeasurable Majesty is the name of his uh, resistance ability, and then the great and powerful Emperor Emil II is his final ability. And so the playstyle of Emil, what makes him really special, is that he specializes in using shared skills from other adventurers in a way, basically bringing others to the fore in his place as he cowers behind them and protects himself. And uh, he specializes in drawing power from others. I, I think that's really kind of cool. It also fits his skills as well in, in different ways, but he has some unique mechanics around shared skills, which I think are what make him the most special. The skills though are pretty good too. So let's start with those. Follow me minions can only be used when the user has one or more ego gauge charges, which by the way, he has an ego gauge. So yeah, that is completely fitting. When you have one or more ego gauge charges, if you use follow me minions, it consumes one charge of your gauge. And if one or more teammates are located behind you, it grants the entire team a strength amp, a team strength amp, I should say. Otherwise, you get a user strength amp. So this is kind of like Nadine's skills, if you remember her main skill uh, way is back where she takes a, a selfie or a photograph. You want to have teammates in the area of effect to increase the effectiveness of that move. Similar here, it sort of depends on your positioning, but you want teammates behind you. And if they are, you can jump to a team strength amp, which is pretty substantial versus getting a user strength amp. It normally takes a while to ramp those up, in particular after your first one. And so even though the max level is two here on the strength amp, that's something you could help increase with a teammate that has a max level of three. I think this is actually a pretty significant buff. So yeah, this is gonna be nice in the primordial dragon trials against Brunhilde if she, like uh, Primal Midgard Sormer, has uh, Curse of Nihility in her set, then this is going to be one of the better ways you can buff your entire team. Then Protect Me Peons is similar. It can only be used when you have one or more Ego Gauge charges. It consumes one charge of the Ego Gauge and grants the user damage diffusion. So if you don't remember what this is, it's an ability we've seen before. Uh, Harl had it. It's kind of a special type of buff where when the character who has that buff would take damage, instead that damage is prevented and it's distributed across your team members. So basically it's Emil using his teammates as human shields to protect himself, which is completely fitting once again. And then if one or more teammates are located in front of the user, it grants the entire team a team defense amp. Otherwise grants the user a defense amp. So notably these are opposite. So follow me minions, you wanna be in front, makes complete sense. You're leading the rabble as it were into the charge of battle. For protect me peons, you have to be behind them because you are cowering behind all of your support, all of your other characters on your team. So you have to pay attention to the positioning. Um, not sure exactly the you know, amount of time these skills take to execute if like your AI might have time to wander off, but I would imagine it registers pretty quickly once you use them, whether your allies or your teammates are in front or behind of you. And uh, yeah, this one focuses on defense amps because of course, protect me peons. And once again, you can escalate quickly here if you're getting team defense amps. It's not a hard requirement to have another character, another adventurer, either in front or behind you. So I think that he is one of the best adventurers as far as ramping up with uh, amp buffs goes, both strength and defense, which is very strong. Uh, so I think that's, that's in itself pretty interesting and, and promising. When you look at the current end game, uh, before we think about Primal Brunhilde, you're going to want to bring water adventurers to legend difficulty of Ayaha and Detoha. You're also going to want to use water adventurers against Surtur on the master difficulty, against Lilith on the master and legend difficulties. This is an adventure I could see with Legend Lilith making the first phase of that fight go by a little bit faster with the ability to accelerate the strength amps out. The defense amps might help a little bit with survival as well, but I think that's one possible use case. Against Surtur, there's more of a need for afflictions, but amps are notably a way that your standard attacks could start to deal more damage to Surtur's barriers, and also it's not like Emil is using damage dealing skills here. These skills are buff skills. So 
One of the things you don't want to do against Surtur is when Surtur has his barrier up, you don't want to throw skills into it. And so Emil's not going to have to worry about that. He doesn't have damage dealing skills like that, at least not in his main skills, because he can have those for his shared skills and they get bonuses. Let's continue reading on and we'll get to that part. Co-ability is skill damage 15%, very solid. That's your standard wand co-ability, but it's one of the good co-abilities as far as damage output goes in general. And then a chain co-ability, which when you have a team strength amp, and if you're a water uh, character or adventurer, you're going to get a 6% increase in your skill gauge fill rate. So basically skill haste of 6%. It's not bad in conjunction with the extra skill damage. It really depends on the specific character that you're applying this to, whether they get a benefit from 6% skill haste or exactly how much skill haste they need in order to, let's say, get off their skills at a faster clip in their rotations. But in general, I think this is pretty good. And when it comes to AI, they don't always execute combos fully. A lot of times in overdrive, they spam four strikes. They have behaviors that are unlike what we might think of as just behaviors in a vacuum or the best ways to ramp up SP in a vacuum. And so for that reason, sometimes these little increments in skill haste can actually make a difference. So I think this is actually pretty good on the co-ability chain co-ability side. I'm fairly sure you're gonna have full uptime effectively on your team strength amps because it's so easy. The skill energy cost on these is the same, but effectively it's gonna be gated by your ego gauge charges. If you can get those ego gauge charges at a rapid enough pace, it seems like it's going to be easy to have complete uptime on team strength amps. Kind of reminds me a little bit of Kimono Elisan here with her unique buffs and how you essentially have those permanently in the duration of the battle. There's not a lot of uh, not a lot of lost time on those to the point where once your skills you you get to the point where you can have your skills fully charged and just wait until buffs uh, wear out that sort of thing because they're around so long. I think that Emil might play similarly here. Anyway, we get to the abilities. The first one, Waterworm's Guidance 2, grants Emil a Dragon Drive gauge and changes the shapeshift button into a Dragon Drive button. So first, I like how they acknowledge, they didn't retcon. It's a picture of Mercury, but they didn't retcon and just randomly let him shapeshift into Mercury, right? He can't shapeshift. He doesn't have a pact with the dragon. He's the failed Dyernell Empire, the failed sibling, as it were. So he gets this dragon drive button instead. But what it does is completely hilarious. Tapping the button activates Emil's dragon drive, consumes some of the gauge, and performs a special attack. His dragon drive ends immediately after this attack, so it's not actually like a mode that he stays in. It's one move that he can do by spending some gauge to unleash this attack. And let me put the animation of this attack on screen now. It's from the Twitter trailer for Emil, because I think it's just super delightful. Basically, Mercury just shows up and gives him like a tail whip to just kind of get him back into the battle. Just sort of, just get him back into the swing of things. Just. It's perfect humanoid Mercury in the Elementary Escapades event. The relationship with Emil was super fun. And I love how they've highlighted that dynamic there without forcing something onto Emil. Like, yes, he's not pack bound to Mercury, so he's not going to shapeshift into Mercury. And he's not that good of an adventurer that he's going to actually be able to wield her power in Dragon Drive either. It's just summoning... Mercury to <laughs> kick him into shape and get him into the battle. It's very funny. I don't know if it'll actually be any good as far as damage or effectiveness. Maybe because in the animation you're in Dragon Drive, maybe that'll help sometimes with uh, tanking certain moves or something. But honestly, I don't see it as a super important part of what's going on with Emil. I just think it's a really charming nod. More importantly though, this ability is also what gives Emil his ego gauge and it can have up to three charges. It fills when standard attacks, dash attacks, and four strikes connect with enemies. We don't know exactly what those will look like yet at the time of recording. Maybe he has some special types of standard attacks, dash attacks, and four strikes, but not completely sure on that. And here's another important piece. In addition, grants Emil four more skill points for equipping shared skills and increases his skill gauge fill rate by 40%. Basically a 40% skill haste there which is absurd, and then four more skill points for equipping shared skills. Every adventure up till now has had 10, 
he has 14. So he glossed this over initially, but it's part of his abilities. So I don't know if he's going to start with 14, but once you fully unlock him and build him up, of course, he'll have 14. Um, that is really interesting. We've waited a long time for that to actually become relevant. Finally, the point costs and the maximum total are a design space that the developers of the game are willing to tap into here for Emil. And I think they've chosen a good character to do this with because Emil's whole thing is getting others to do the dirty work for him, and shared skills are a way of representing that. So unlike most adventurers, you know, you can equip shared skills. Right now, the highest cost for any shared skill is a seven. You can equip two sevens. You can equip seven and a six. Most adventurers, if you're using one shared skill that's a seven or six, your trade-off is your other slot has to be a three or a four. For Emil, that's not a barrier. And the fact that he has this extra skill gauge fill rate, plus in the water element, you have dragons like G and C, you're going to be able to rapidly spam some of these shared skills. You see this strategy with characters like Mitsuba already, especially if you've played through Mercurial Gauntlet with her, you may know that her unique basic attacks give her really high SP gain. And so using GNC with her to spam some extra uh, critical damage and inspiration on the team can be very effective. I think we're going to see something similar with Emil here, but something that works better in the world of Nihility, in the world where most of our buffs get negated, but he can choose which shared skills to equip such that they're actually effective for the content you're facing. Plus, he already has most of the amp stuff covered in his own personal skills. So yeah, this seems like it's going to be very strong to me, or at least very high potential, especially as we read on here. Of course, he has the complete immunity to burn and stun with immeasurable majesty too, but his final ability is what's important. The great and powerful Emperor Emil II increases damage dealt by shared skills by 150%, and if they are skills that deal damage, they'll also cause frostbite. So I think the frostbite is noteworthy in that against Ayaha and Atoha, okay, now He's not only serving in the support slot, but at least he's also a Frostbite enabler, which can deal with some of their mechanics. He also probably has decent hit count if he plays like a normal wand in any way that can deal with some of their hit count stuff. So I think that that's a really nice, uh, nice element to see. But also the 150% extra damage is important because shared skills normally get slightly nerfed. They get slightly reduced in damage or recovery potency, for damage dealing shared skills on most adventurers, they only deal 70% of their normal damage. So when you look at these together, you're looking at 1.75 times the normal amount, which is still a good amount, and it's more than any other character can deal with shared skills. So yeah, on net, it's definitely a positive and an improvement over what most adventurers are going to do with shared skills, and it gives him such a unique design space. I mean. You could just put two good damage dealing skills on a meal, like uh, Dragon Yule Ilya or Julieta, Summer Julieta, depending on what you're trying to do. Uh, maybe you want to put like Halloween Norwin, let's say, or it's Halloween Norwin, Halloween Silas, um, and have Dispel, two, two slots of Dispel there, and also deal a lot of damage. Like there are good utility skills. Let's say you want to put Formal Joaquim. Formal Joaquim costs six, so Usually you can't pair that with too many other things, but it causes 30 seconds of poison and 30 seconds of storm lash. Well now, you also have the frostbite on it, it's a triple affliction enabler. And now that we have these Kaleido prints, that's actually a real thing that you could make happen because you have enough slots to run three affliction punishers. So this is really interesting to me, I mean I think this is probably the most compelling part about Emil is just... How do you want to build this? You know, do you put two buff skills there because he has this crazy high skill gauge fill rate and just have him go crazy with GNC with his amps and other kinds of buffs? And maybe that's also pretty effective for content where those buffs are not uh, eliminated by Nihility. So I think he's going to be a very fun character to experiment with. But here's the limitation. The limitation is only your lead character in a party can have shared skills on them. So what that means is, for auto battle purposes, if you want to do true auto and not have to switch off your lead, you're going to be using Emil as your lead character if you want to take advantage of him to his fullest extent. 
And as a backline character, Emil probably isn't that bad. He's still an amp spammer here with good chain co-ability and co-ability, but he's not going to be at his full potential that he gets when he uses the skill gauge fill rate mechanics, the shared skill bonuses. So that's the one limitation I think he's going to place on your team construction is that you're going to have to put him in your lead slot. And sure, after that, you can switch to another character if you're playing manually. If you're playing in full auto or auto repeat, he's going to need to be able to survive as your lead character. And uh, the good thing is helper skills, you know, they can't be used in every quest. They can't be used in Legend Difficulty quests, but shared skills can pretty much be used in every quest, including the Kaleidoscape. And it even mentions here that uh, these will apply to shared skills and weapon skills in the Kaleidoscape, which is super nice. So all those skill tablets that you pick up, you're going to be able to utilize it plus on your weapon skill. But the weapon skill does bring up an important thing for the main game outside of the Kaleidoscape, and that is once we get our primal Dragalia weapons for uh, Mercury's Trial, you might want to equip those. Those have nice bonuses. They have a nice built-in skill. It doesn't appear, based on what's written here, that Emil would be able to use that skill with increased effectiveness. So that might be another little trade-off that you would face, like you're sacrificing your weapon skill slot to run two good shared skills. It's a small thing, but it might be something that uh, is relevant. If you put him in the back line, it doesn't matter. But for now, especially in current content where our best weapons in the water element are Agito weapons, and the Agito buffs get nullified by Curse of Nihility, this is really good. You're going to put two good shared skills, you'll be able to use them at a faster clip, and they're going to deal increased damage if they are damage dealing skills. So all in all, I think that, you know, there is a limitation of this having to be on your lead character, but Gala Meal seems quite strong to me. Seems like a good adventure. So if I had the resources, I would love to summon, especially just to play around with different scared skills combinations and see what's most effective, what works the best for him. But unfortunately, right now I have just under 6,000 Wormite, so I'm not going to be summoning on this one. If you are, I wish you luck. Let me know how it goes going for Gala Emil for you, and let me know how it is playing with him once you summon him. I'd be curious to hear about what some of the most effective shared skills combinations you think are out there, because I really didn't delve into that too much in this video. There are just so many ways you could go, I think, so I'd be curious to see what ends up being optimal in the end. But that is pretty much going to do it for today, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you as always for watching. Take care and I'll see you next time.